Here we are with the graphing the sine functions. So, thing to remember with graphing the sine function um, is what the sine graph looks like. So, if we use this uh, format, um, there's three important pieces to help us graph. The first is the amplitude, okay, which we call A. The amplitude tells us how when we remember sine is a periodic function, the amplitude tells us how high up we go in the hills and how far down we go in the valleys. Okay, So that's important to understand how high and how low it's going to go. Okay, Another one is K. That's our midline shift. Okay, If it's positive, we're shifting this whole graph up. If it's negative, we're shifting it down. And then the B is kind of the tricky one, okay? Because B is not the period. The period meaning from one point, how far it goes till we hit that same point again. One of those is a period. But 2 pi or 360, depending on if you're dealing with radians or degrees, divided by B is going to tell us what that period is, okay? So, on these first two problems, we've got the parent graph here, okay? So that's going to help us as we look at how the parent graph is different than um, the other ones. So, to find the amplitude of the parent gra graph, the amplitude is 1, okay? Because it's like there's 1 out front. So for both of these, the amplitude is 1. The period, that's 1, so 2 pi divided by 1 is 2 pi. Okay. And then there's no k, but we don't really need to know the midline shift. Okay. Now remember that with the sine function, it's related to the unit circle. So if we have the unit circle, the sine values are the y values. So we think about those y values, it can help us of those important special angles that helps us see how it's all connected. And mainly, when we're doing a sine function, we want to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. Okay, So we like to start at 0 which would be the y-axis, which the y-value here is also 0, so at 0 degrees or 0 radians, the y-value is 0. Then, as we're going up okay, to 90 degrees, or pi-halves in radians, okay, that y-value equals 1. So graphically, it looks like this. So starting at 0 degrees, because the degree is like, or the radians, these are the x-values. Okay. So we're not using the x values on the unit circle, but the degrees are actually the x values, and then the y values are the sine, which is the y value of the points. Okay, I know that's a little confusing. So like we said, we started out at 0, 0, then at 90 degrees we went up to 1. Okay, if it's in radians, same idea, except instead of 90 degrees, it's pi halves we go up to 1. Okay, Then we keep going and we get to 180 degrees or just pi and that goes takes us back to a y value of 0. So we get a 180 and a pi we're back to 0. Then as we go down to 270 degrees or 3 pi halves Okay, that y value now is negative 1, and then as we go back around, we take it back to 0. And as the graph keeps going, we keep going around that circle, and it's the same exact pieces. Okay, That's why it's called periodic, because it's repeating those same values over and over and over. And that's why a period is only considered how long it takes to get around that circle once. Okay, Except instead of graphically making it a circle... What we're doing is 
we're stretching it out. It's like we're unraveling that circle, right? And seeing how it looks when we unravel it. So, looking back at our graph, we said at 270 we went down to negative 1, or 3 pi halves went down to negative 1, and then at 360 it goes back. 2 pi it goes back. Okay, if we went another 90 degrees, it would go up here. That would be like 90 again. And then as we kept going, we'd go around. Okay, so when we graph these, okay, it's just going like that. That's why we call it periodic. It's just going to repeat. Because, like I said, we're just going around and around the circle. Just those y values. Okay, so we keep getting those same y values. Now, if we were able to get the, we could look at those y values on each of these points, and those would be represented by the parts on our graph in between the 0 and 90, or 90 and 180, okay? If we looked at those, we would see those same exact values for the 45, 30, the 60 degrees, okay? Whether they're radians or degrees. So there's our parent graph, okay? And so, our period, since it's 2 pi, technically we could have stopped right there. And that's all the graph wanted us to do, is to just graph it. One period. Because once we have one period, we know what it's going to look like over and over again. Okay? So again, those five points are a good way to understand how the graph looks, knowing what that parent graph looks like. Okay? Because as the amplitude adjusts, it just adjusts this 90 and this 270, okay? As the midline changes, it adjusts those ones on the x-axis, the pi, 2 pi, 0, or 180, 360, okay? Um, it'll just shift it up or down, okay? Now, the period, when that shifts, that kind of scrunches everything up or lengthens it, to, it out. That one's a little bit harder to understand. But first, we're just going to start out with a couple that we're just dealing with a change in the amplitude. So first thing we want to do is just kind of see what it looks like when we change the amplitude, okay? In degrees or radians, okay? So if we look at number three, our amplitude is three. Our period, because that's doesn't have a number there, it's going to be 2 pi. Okay, so what I like to do is usually draw that parent graph, at least at first, so you can kind of see the difference. So there's our parent graph. Okay, so this amplitude of 3 actually doesn't change those points, those three points on the midline. Okay, what it does do is it changes these two. Instead of from this midline, this x-axis, instead of just going up one and down one, now we're going to go up three and down three. So I'd go clear up to here, and clear down to negative three here, and so it would look like that, okay? Kind of a way to think about it is that it's like we're taking this circle here and we're extending it out three times as big, okay? And I know that's really not three times as big, the y values on the x-axis here are still zero, it's just the 90 and the 270 that change. And so that blue graph is our new graph. So same idea for this one, right? There's my parent graph. Plotting those five points that are the important ones, okay? The 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Then, my amplitude is 2, period is still 2 pi. Okay, so this time instead of going up 3, I just go up 3, or 2, and I go down 2. And those points are going to remain the same. Now, does it matter if it's radians or degrees? No, same idea. Like these two, same thing. So, 0, pi halves, that would go up to 2 pi back to 0, 3 pi halves, down to negative 2, 2 pi, back to 0, and we finish it up. Okay, again 6. Now if we've got these, this is our parent graph, right? 
then again, these points stay the same. Amplitude of 3. I guess I should have written this stuff down here, huh? Our period is still 2 pi, because we didn't have a number next to that. But we're going to go up 3 at 90 degrees and down 3, or pi halves, I should say, radians. And 3 pi halves, we're going down to negative 3. And there's our graph. Okay? So that's how amplitude affects things. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a fraction. Okay? Fraction just means instead of bigger, it's actually going to be smaller. No number here, so it's still a per period of 2 pi. So if I'm thinking about that parent graph, it looks like this. Okay? But ours, now, instead of going up to 1, it goes to 1 half. So it's about there. And there, these ones all stay the same. So it's just more shallow. All right, now 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now we're dealing with a different period. Okay, notice there's no number out front, but there's a number with the angle. Okay, the way to think about this is looking at 9 and 10. That's a good example. Okay. See, that one has 3 times theta. This is theta divided by 3. This one think of as 1 third times theta. Okay. So, to find our period, what we need to do is we go 2 pi, because we don't have any degrees here. If it was degrees, we'd do 360, divided by that number b. So, in this case, b is going to be 1 fourth, because you're dividing by 4. So 2 pi divided by 1 fourth, that's really like 2 pi, you know, divided by 1 fourth, but we can't divide, so we multiply by 4 over 1. So 2 pi times 4 gives us 8 pi. So our period is 8 pi, our amplitude is 1, and we didn't move it, shift it up or down. Okay, so now here's how this affects things. Okay, so... And here's the best way I can explain it. Now, notice this is a lot smaller. Okay? At 0, we were at 0. Of pi, we were still at 0. And at 2 pi, we were at 0. So half of pi, 90 degrees, we were up 1. So about right there. And half of pi and 2 pi was 3 pi half. So right there. So that's the same parent function as that one. It's just because the scale's different. It's squished in more. Okay. Now, here's kind of the way I think through it, and let me redraw this one because I can kind of show it a little better, I think. Okay. When we change our period, I'm either think of like a spring or a slinky. Okay. If you grab both ends and pull it out, it's going to stretch it out, but it's still going to be in that same space, right? And if you squish it close together, okay, it's just the loops become either spread out more or closer together. Same idea here. And the way we think about it is we look at the first and the last, okay? They both end on that x-axis. So my first and my last over here are going to end on the x-axis. Where do I start? Well, we always start at 0, 0 for sine, unless the midline shifts it up or down, okay, then my period is 8 pi instead of just 2 pi, normally I end right there, I'm going to end at 8 pi, okay, so I'm stretching that spring out. Now, once we have the first and the last, notice that on that midline, on that x-axis, there's pi, and it's right in the middle of 0 and 2 pi. Well, what's in the middle of 0 and 8 pi? It's 4 pi. So 4 pi becomes that middle point. Okay? Then I treat them separately. I've got the first and the, the first half and the last half of the graph. The first half, it goes up at 90 degrees to whatever the amplitude is. So half of 0 and 4 pi is going to be 2 pi. So at 2 pi, I go up to 1. Okay? That's like my new 90 degrees. Okay? Second half, 3 pi halves is in between 2 pi and pi, just halfway, so halfway in between 4 pi and 8 pi, or 6 pi, I'm going down 1. And 
and my new graph looks like that. Okay, so again, my parent graph is really short because it goes only goes to 2 pi, but we've taken it and we've stretched it out. And as we stretched it out, it made the normally you know 270 degrees get up to 6 pi, the 90 degree up to 2 pi, and the pi or the 180 up to 4 pi. Okay, because we're not pulling it off of that starting point. Okay, so number 10, pretty similar. Okay, so again, my parent graph would look like this. Okay, my amplitude is 1. My period is going to be, well, my b is 1 third. So I go 2 pi divided by 1 third, which basically just means this 3 comes up and multiplies. So if you're dividing here, you're basically multiplying by 2 pi. So my period is going to be 6 pi. So that means for my new one, I still start at 0, 0, because nothing changed that. And I'm ending at 6 pi. So to get to my 180 point, this point, because it's in between for our parent graph, we look here, what's in between 0 and 6 pi? It's at 3 pi. So there's my middle one. Then my first one, my 90 degree, is in between 180 and 0. So in between 0 and 3 pi, it's going to be right there, right? And I go up to 1, because that's my amplitude. And in between the last two, in between 4 pi and 5 pi, we're going down 1. Oh, wrong color. And that purple one is my new graph. Okay? Now, looking at 9 and 11... Let's see how it affects it when we're not dividing by the number, but multiplying. So my amplitude's still 1. My period, however, is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. Well, I can't really simplify that, so just leave it 2 pi thirds. This is where it can be helpful to understand the degrees. Okay, So, pi over 3 is like 60 degrees. Okay, 2 pi over 3 would be 120 degrees. If you don't believe me, convert it. Remember, 180 divided by pi. Okay, whereas 2 pi, right, is 360. Okay, so my parent graph would look like this. Okay, it would look something like that. Now, if we are, this one we're going to squish, okay? When the number makes the period smaller, we're going to squish it down. So, 2 pi thirds is about 120 degrees, okay? So, that is 180. Um, pi halves is 90, so it's going to be about in that range, okay? And when they're not easy ones to use, okay... Because 3 pi over 4 is going to be 135, so a little less than that. There's our end. Okay. Now, just like I did before, this middle one is in between the two. Well, instead of trying to figure out what that means, I'm just going to estimate what in between would look like. Okay. Then, when we go up with the 90 degree normally, okay, in between these two, I'm going to go up to 1. So I just estimate in between. And then the second half I estimate below. And so I've squished it down, and it looks like that. So these ones can be a little trickier, especially if your graph isn't really helping you out. All right? So 11, amplitude of 1 again, because there's no number out there. My period isn't 2. It's going to be 2 pi divided by 2. Well, 2 pi divided by 2 is just pi. So my period is pi. So normally, right, we start here, halfway point, end here, at 90 we go up 1, 270 we go down 1, and that's my parent graph. So, now we're going to squish this whole thing back to pi. So, our starting is still at the same place, our ending is at pi. Alright, I just said a little bit without recording, so I think this is where I left off. So, after we get the 0 to pi, half of pi um, is going to be now 
pi halves, or the 90 degrees. So we draw that one right there, okay? And then normally, between 0 and pi, halfway between was pi halves, but now between 0 and pi halves, halfway is pi fourths, or half of 90 is um, 45. And then between pi halves and pi, half of that would be 3 pi fourths. So because our amplitude is 1, we just go 1 above and 1 below, and then we draw our graph. Okay. So in other words, if we look at these distances, like the distance normally between 0 and 90, we cut that in half because a period of pi is half of 2 pi. Then from 0 to pi, you know, that gets cut in half, by pi halves. And to the 3 pi halves gets cut down to 3 pi fourths, and so on for all of those. We can see that that's kind of another visual way to look at it. All right, so that's kind of just separately how that period affects it. And period generally seems to be the toughest one for people to get. Amplitude seems pretty straightforward, and what we're going to talk about next in 12, 13, 14 is going to be the midline shift, which is easy. And then the last four, we'll kind of, kind of combine them all together, okay? So when we just have the plus out here, that's the midline. That's just going to shift. So normally our midline was the x-axis. Notice that on all of these, those ones that were at zero, because of the unit circle, always hung out on that midline. Well, now we're basically shifting the whole thing. So here's our parent graph for sine. Okay, it looks like that. And that midline is now going to get shifted by one. So we're pushing it up by one, which means every single one of these points is also going to be shifted up by one. Okay, and we're basically going to have the same shape, same idea, it's just everything is shifted by one. Okay, get rid of those arrows because that's just too much. So, instead of starting at zero, zero, my midline start is now up there. It's almost like I'm moving the x-axis. And then we go to the end, which was a 2 pi, which stays on it. Then halfway is pi. Then half of that is pi halves because our amplitude is 1. We only go up 1. And we only go down one, and there's our new one. And so it's like it's parallel, we've just shifted it up one. Okay, so this one, we're shifting it up two. So now, we start there, and that's essentially our midline. Okay, so we would also end on that line at two pi, because, oh, amplitude is still one, period is still two pi, because we didn't adjust any of those. keep forgetting to write those down, don't I? Okay, then in between is pi, then at 90 degrees, or pi halves, we go up one, three pi halves, or 270, go down one, and there's our new graph. Okay, now if we go down one, same process. Just shift it down one, start here, end there, because our amplitude is one, and our period is two pi. So in between we go to pi, pi halves, we go up one. 3 pi halves, we go down one. And it's just been shifted down. All right, now let's take a look and see how we deal with it when we've got multiple things going on. Okay, so if we look at 15. Okay, first thing to notice is I'm going down one. So that shifts everything down by one. Okay, again, just for reference, oops. Here's what the parent graph would look like on this scale. Got to pay attention to that scale because sometimes it changes. I think I can draw that better. And probably better than that too. Yeah, apparently not. Okay. So I know I'm going to start right here. But where am I going to end? Well, now we need to find our period. So it's 4. So I'm going to go 2 pi divided by 4. Because that 4 is b and it's 2 pi divided by b to find it, okay? So can I simplify that? Yeah, that becomes pi over 2, because that's like 2 times 2, so we cancel out a 2, 2 left on the bottom. So that means we end at pi halves, which is like 90 degrees. So my end point is right there. So in between 0 and pi halves is pi fourths, okay? Then we need to have our amplitude, okay? 
So our amplitude is going to tell us how high these two points go. Okay, so in between here, how far up and then how far down. All right, so out here, our amplitude is one half. So that means we're going to go, instead of going up in between these two, going up one, we're only going to go up half. So we have a really small graph here. And then right there, we're going to go down about half. So we end up with our graph looking just like that little guy. Okay, but that's how it's adjusted. So we scrunched it in, we smushed it down, um, and then we pulled it down. Okay, best way to do it is to deal with the midline first, then the period, then the amplitude. Okay, so negative one again. So we're going down one, one more time. Okay, then another four here, so that's going to tell us our period is pi over two, because it's the same we had over here. Okay, so we start down here at our mid, where our midline crosses the y-axis, and we're going to end up pi halves again. Okay, being, just breaking it off of that, and that's also halfway in between, and our amplitude is going to be four this time. So in between these two, we're going to go up four, which is actually one, two, three, four. Not up two, four, but up four units. And in between here and here, down four units. So we end up right about there and right about here. So this one gets really wide. Or tall, I guess I should say. All right, 17. Same idea. Minus 2, so we go down 2 on our midline. If you need 2, you can write k equals negative 2. Okay, our period is 4 again, so again, that's 2 pi divided by 4, which reduces to pi halves. So that means we start here and end here at pi halves. And in between, we have our point. And our amplitude is 3, so we're going up 3. So in between these two points... We go up three, right there, and in between these two points, we go down three, right there, and that's our graph. All right, so we, sorry, you probably heard me call my daughter's name. We're sitting here, and she's got piano practice, and I almost forgot to send her into the place, because I was working on this, because my other daughter, Sophie, is... Um, doing stuff, doing her practice. Anyway, number 18, enough about me. Let's take a look at this math problem. So our k, our midline, is plus 2, so we're going to go up 2 for our midline. It's a good idea to draw that midline while you get figure it out. Our period now, we have a pi over 2, so that's 2 pi divided by 1 half, which just turns into 2 pi times 2, or 4 pi. So that means we start here, but I end at 4 pi. So now we're stretching it out, aren't we? Okay. And in between that, 2 pi is now our midway point. Then our amplitude is 3. So from here, we're going 3 up and 3 down. So as we go in between here at pi, we go up 3. And in between here at 3 pi, we go down 3. Giving us the rest of our graph. And then we draw this, and there we go with the sine function, our first periodic function, okay? So, there we go, guys. That's how we deal with this stuff, and hopefully that helped out and was an easy way to do it. Remember those five points, very useful. It's all based off of these easy five points, okay? I know that looks like four, but this counts as two, okay? And using this format with everything. All right, there we go.